Hi, this is Jason O'Donnell here at Crunchy Data, and today we'll be installing Ansible Tower using Crunchy Certified Postgres deployed by the Postgres operator. The first thing we need to do is install the Postgres operator. Crunchy provides an Ansible playbook to make the installation easier. The first thing we need to do is edit the inventory file and configure the settings that the operator will use. In this file you'll find things like the administrator username and password, the images that the operator is going to use when deploying things like pods or jobs, the actual images of the operator itself that will be used during installation, some of the default capabilities such as auto failover of clusters, PG backrest for backups, badger and metric collection, additional settings around backup such as archiving mode and the archive timeout, failover settings, some of the default Postgres settings such as DB names, default users, lengths of passwords, and finally the types of storage that the operator will use when creating things like pods and jobs. With the inventory file configured, we can now install the operator. We do this by running an Ansible playbook command, giving it the inventory file, and specifying the install playbook. The installation through Ansible is now complete. Next, we need to configure the Postgres operator client to talk to the API server. First, we need to set a few environment variables. These are things like the TLS cert that will be used by the client, the key, and the URL of the API server so that the client can talk to it. By running the pgo version command, we can see if everything is configured correctly. Now that the client has been configured, and the Postgres operator has been installed, we are ready to create clusters using the Postgres operator. We do this by using the pgo create cluster command. In this case, we'll give it a password. This has been already created in the temp directory in a file so that we don't have the password in the command line history. And next, because we're using pg backrest as our backup solution, we need to tell it the name of the config map that has the configuration file for pg backrest. This has already been installed by the Ansible playbook. Lastly, we give the cluster a name. In this case, I'm going to call this my cluster. The cluster might take a few minutes to deploy, but we can watch its progress by issuing an OC get pods command. We can see here that we have a new deployment called my cluster. It's currently not ready. We'll watch its status until it's ready. The cluster is now ready to use. In order to support our high availability model, we need to add read replicas to this cluster. We can do that by issuing the pgo scale command, giving it the name of the cluster we want to scale and the amount of replicas to add to that cluster. The new read replicas will take a minute to deploy. We can watch its status by issuing the oc get pods command. The new read replica is now ready to use. Our cluster is ready for high availability. The last thing we want to do before installing Ansible Tower is to create a backup 
using pg backrest and we do that by issuing the pgo backup command telling it that this is a pg backrest backup and we want to backup the cluster my cluster we'll see now that a new job has been kicked off the backrest my cluster job which is working on taking the backup the job is completed and we can check if we have a backup now by doing the pgo show backup telling it the backup type, in this case PG Backrest, and finally the cluster name My Cluster. And we can see here that we have one full backup. Our cluster is now ready to be used by Ansible Tower. To install Ansible Tower, we'll be using the OpenShift Ansible Tower setup bundle provided by Red Hat. In this bundle is an inventory file here we have to configure the Postgres cluster that we just created. First we'll give it a host name of the cluster. In this case our host name is my cluster. The username that Ansible Tower will use to connect to that cluster, test user, the password of that user, the database you should connect to, and the port. With those settings configured we can now install Ansible Tower. The installation is now complete. We'll watch the status of Ansible Tower in, in OpenShift by issuing the OC get pods command. Ansible Tower is now ready to be used. We can check by going to the web browser and navigating to the Ansible Tower web app. We'll sign into the web app using the admin username and password provided in the Ansible playbook inventory file. Next we'll give it a license key. And there we have it, Ansible Tower is now ready to be used using Crunchy Certified Postgres as its backend. The last thing we'll want to do is test if auto failover is working. To test if it's working correctly, we'll want to delete the deployment that the primary belongs to. We can do that by issuing the OC delete deployment command, giving it the selector primary equals true. This will delete the primary pod. Once the operator realizes that the primary is no longer healthy, it will elect one of the replica pods to be the new primary. And we can see here in the Ansible Tower web app, there was a brief interruption, but it's quickly resolved after the new promotion has happened. This concludes our installation of Ansible Tower using Crunchy Certified Postgres 
using the Postgres operator running on OpenShift. To learn more about Crunchy Data's products, visit our website at crunchydata.com.